When Jaguar introduced the F-Pace SUV a little over a year ago, it was exactly what they needed. It quickly became the best-selling model in the lineup. And when I tested one last year, it was a V6 S model with the 380 horsepower supercharged V6. However, this week, Jaguar has sent me over the diesel F-Pace. This is equipped with the two liter Ingenium turbo diesel with up to 33 MPG. So is this the engine that is arguably more desirable for the amount of people that are buying these things? That's what we're here to find out. Last year when I tested the F-Pace S, I was very impressed with it. It was essentially an SUV that made me actually want to purchase one because it drove more like a rear-wheel drive sports sedan and it had the handling and dynamic balance of the company's smaller XE sports sedan that this vehicle is based upon. Now, uh, when the diesel version showed up on my doorstep, I was pretty um, interested by it. This is a car that has a lot less horsepower than the supercharged V6 that I drove. However, being rated at 2633 and offering pretty similar amounts of torque at 318 pound feet makes it an interesting proposition for those of you who don't want to drive a hybrid. If you guys look at the actual market for luxury crossovers, the F-Pace is the only diesel offering in the segment. There's no more Audi, of course, with Dieselgate. BMW pulled out and Mercedes pulled out and Porsche, of course, because it's part of the Volkswagen Group, pulled out of the diesel market. So if you want a diesel luxury crossover, this is your only game in town. You could also pick between a Chevrolet Equinox GMC Terrain and the upcoming Mazda CX-5 diesel. However, those are more mainstream crossovers, so they're technically in a different class. Now, the F-Pace is not the company's smallest SUV anymore. That that category or that distinction goes to the E-Pace, which was just introduced for 2018. Hopefully I'll show you guys a video of that car uh, in the future. Now, um, the Jaguar F-Pace is pretty uh, broad in its engine appeal or its, its engine portfolio. Um, the diesel is technically the, or one step above the base. There's a new two liter uh, turbo four cylinder called the 25T. There's also a 30T and then the uh, S model. The 20D fits in between the 25T and the 30D. Now, when you look at the styling of the F-Pace, you can it hasn't changed, of course. Um, it doesn't really need to. This car still looks fresh. It still looks new. It still turns a lot of heads out on the road, um, even though Jag managed to sell nearly 50,000 of these in the first model year of sales. Now, my tester is the R Sport model. Uh, it's basically the top of the trim for the diesel engine configuration. There's also a base, a premium, a prestige, and then the R Sport. This model gives you its own unique front and rear bumper. It has features from the prestige trim, like the full LED headlights with LED daytime running lights and turn signals. Now, you can see the grille has the traditional Jaguar grille um, with the emblem in the center. It's missing that little cover, plexiglass cover, because my tester does not have the driver assistance pack, so it doesn't have the driver or the adaptive cruise control with the Q assist. Now, these wheels are part of the R Sport package. They're a 20 inch wheel. You can also get a 22. If you guys think these look a little bit small, they do have a little bit more sidewall, which does contribute to a slightly better ride quality. Now, the F Pace is kind of a tweener in terms of its size. Its wheelbase stretches at about 113 inches long, about 186 uh, inches long overall. Uh, it literally splits the difference between a Lexus NX and a Lexus RX, um, although its price is more similarly to like an RX or an Audi Q5, a little bit more expensive than an Acura RDX. Now at the rear, again, you have a lot of familiar Jaguar styling cues. It has taillights that were basically lifted right off of an F-Type, which is the company's sports car, one of the most beautiful new cars on the road today. And really the F-Pace stands out. I mean, I like the uh, integrated or the exhaust tips on the diesel that you get with the twin pipes. The V6 models will give you the dual pipes that I've shown you guys before on the S model. And aside from the slightly boring gray color, uh, I think this is one of the better looking SUVs. It's just right size for a lot of people. Uh, and I think this is a design that will surely uh, age well uh, down the road. But enough about the exterior, let's take a look at the inside and see uh, how this differentiates versus the last F-Pace that I showed you. So when you guys purchase an F-Pace, if you guys go for the prestige trim and up, you will get the company Smart Key Access System with push button start and keyless ignition. Here is the current corporate Jaguar key fob. It's shared with Land Rover. It's a nice looking key. It feels good in your hands. Uh, although there are some luxury brands that do offer a slightly more premium feeling key. But when you lock the door, uh, you can see just push the lock button the mirror is also electrically fold. Now, um, there's also a sensor on the door handle as you approach the Jag. Uh, just rest your finger here, that locks the door for you. To unlock it, there's a sensor on the back of the handle. 
Just touch the back of the handle and then pull the door, ha the door handle, it'll unlock the door for you. Now, looking at the inside of my tester, it's got this oyster colored interior which I really don't like the interior combination color. It's just too much gray with the outside. And this neon green stitching is just very weird. It's very strange. This is not exclusive to the diesel, of course. I would probably go for the red leather option with the black contrast. I just think this combination, again, is kind of ugly in my eyes. But uh, if you guys like it, you know, that's all up to you. That's all a taste thing. Uh, the seats have multiple adjustments. I believe it's like 16-way adjustable. You can adjust the thigh bolsters. You can, or the thigh extender, you can adjust the actual seat bolsters. You have four-way lumbar. Um, they're a pretty comfortable seat, a little bit more on the firmer side, uh, but Jaguar, uh, the F-Pace tends to be a little bit on the sportier seg side of this segment, so I, I can see exactly why that is. Now, because this is an SUV, you have a really nice, easy step in height, which is important, especially when you're shopping in this class. And then when you shut the door, it sounds solid, um, just basically how I remember. It's pretty much class competitive with all the other offerings. Now, the typical Jaguar theatrics are here. The start, stop button will pulsate like a heartbeat. Uh, and when you have the key in the vehicle, all you have to do is put your foot on the brake and then push the button here to fire up the engine. See, you can see here the uh, steering column is power, power tilt telescoping. The shifter here, um, it actually, it's a rotary dial that rises up. You guys know that. My tester being the um, R Sport does have the full LCD instrument, tan or instrument panel gauges with the 10.2 uh, inch, the uh, InTouch Pro uh, infotainment system. So, you know, it's got the technology here that you expect, the latest stuff from Jaguar and Land Rover, of course. Now the interior materials, this has kind of been an area of criticism with the F-Pace and Jags in general. They're, the design just doesn't quite match the beautiful looks of the exterior. You can see some people have told me this reminds them of a Lincoln LS with the design. It's very 90s, just the shape of the dash and the, the shape of the vents. Um, and then the materials, because if you guys go for the Prestige model and up, the dash will be kind of stitched in the leather, which is nice. It's soft touch. You have the same contrasting stitching. It kind of extends all the way down the center console. However, there are some cheap elements in here. Um, I don't like this. This is like very, very cheap plastic that's over the instrument panel hood. I'm surprised they didn't just extend the leather and make this soft touch. It reminds me of like a car, like a 90s Ford, if I'm being honest. And then on the door panels here, this is soft touch, but it just feels a little bit too cheap for a car that has this expensive of a price tag. I like how the window controls are up here. There's power one touch uh, for all four. You kind of expected that. There's also three person in memory seats. Your lock button is here. There is no like door pocket storage here for your phone, but it is nice and padded here. This aluminum trim is like a $300 extra. There's an aluminum accented door handle on my tester. You do have some storage down here for some drinks and, a and some other things. Um, the steering wheel, as I said, it's powered, tilt and telescoping. The switch is actually on this side, like other Jaguar Land Rover products. Uh, it does have a good amount of range. I like the steering wheel. It's heated. Um, that's included on the on most of the upper trims. Um, I like the aluminum trim. The leaper looks nice. I mean, it's a very nice steering wheel with uh, aluminum paddle shifters that are mounted on the actual wheel. Now, Looking at the center console here, I've shown you guys the InTouch Pro 10.2 inch display. This is the home screen here. You have your audio, phone, climate, and then your navigation function. Going to the GPS, you can see it's a pretty uh, good navigation display, pretty much in line with what you see from Mercedes-Benz uh, and BMW. I still prefer Audi's Google Earth, but it gets the job done. It works It works kind of like a tablet. You can see you can pinch, you can zoom, you can swipe. It is um, relatively quick in its responses, although sometimes I notice that it does lag from time to time when I start the vehicle up and it'll freeze on me occasionally. Uh, so that's just something to keep in mind. This is basically a computer. I do like the interface here. Um, you can see when you have your favorites, you can just access there from your presets and you can kind of scroll along, pick what you want. Um, there's all there, There's also uh, other apps being a jag. If you scroll over to the right here, you can see there's a valet mode where it'll blank out the screen. You have your in-control apps where if you download the jag apps, you can get all, all different source, uh, sources and whatnot uh, that you can graph on from the apps. Um, this one also has ASI as all surface all, all surface information. This kind of um, monitors the um, road conditions. They've taken this from Land Rover. So if you're on like a low friction area, this will help you get unstuck. Although this car does come standard with all wheel drive. Haven't really had a chance to test that. Although if you guys go for the um, V6 supercharged model, you'll have uh, more of those apps 
that have to do with performance as opposed to the diesel option. I mean, overall, I think the head unit here is not necessarily my favorite. Um, I like how the touchscreen doesn't show any fingerprints because that'll drive me nuts, although the fingerprints will be shown all over this piano black plastic. Uh, but anyways, when you put the vehicle into reverse, my tester doesn't have the 360 camera, but it does have front and rear parking sensors. You can see the camera quality has gotten much better over the years uh, when they introduced this new InTouch Pro. It does have the parking sensors front and rear, so it does really help you a lot when you're parking, so that's definitely nice to have. Now looking down here, there is no wireless charging, but there is an area where you could put your phone there. Uh, this controls the 8-speed ZF Automatic. It does have a sport mode, um, and it's relatively easy to use, although it's um, kind of easy to kind of overshot which gear you want at times. Uh, and again, most of you may be used to kind of using a shifter, but it, again, it just takes some getting used to. This controls your uh, drive mode selector. I have it in its dynamic setting. If you push it over to the right, it goes to a normal setting, and then there's also an eco, and there's a rain, ice, snow mode. Uh, for the majority of the test drive, I'll probably end up leaving it in dynamic. I really like how the gauges also turn red when you do that. There's an electronic parking brake here. There's some cup holders, a little bit more storage here on the side. Uh, when you open up the center console, it's lined with felt. It's pretty small. Uh, my tester is missing a luxury package that'll give you a cooled center console that is basically a refrigerator. Um, you have uh, two USB ports, an HDMI, a SIMS card there for the navigation, and then a 12 volt power outlet. In the glove compartment here, it's uh, damped. It's not lined with felt. It's a little bit on the small side compared to some competitors. Uh, when you look above you, all models will basically come with this big panel sunroof, which is fantastic. It's one of the largest ones I've seen. Uh, and the headliner is, is made with a woven kind of material, although I've definitely seen some nicer materials materials in some competitors. Now overall I think the inside of the F-Pace has good enough technology but the amount of luxury could be pumped up a little bit. It seems like Jaguar mostly focused on the chassis and the dynamics and making this one of the you know most beautiful looking on the outside and the sportiest to drive. The rear seat of the F-Pace is also on the smaller end for this segment. You can see this is where I would have the uh, seat to drive and there's good enough legroom here. Uh, my tester it's got a an interior upgrade package that gives you like a power like recline uh, seat back for the rear seat and they're also heated back here. Um, this switch here literally looks like it came off of a 90s Ford So that's really interesting considering how Ford doesn't own any stake in Jaguar or Land Rover anymore But anyways getting back here into the uh, second row It has a really easy step in height again. There's a nice big opening and then when you shut the door it sounds pretty solid as well. Now when you get back here, there's actually good space. I like the foot space underneath here. Um, the floor is nice and low. The bench is high. It has good thigh support. You could put a third person here, although they will have to straddle this hump here for the rear drive shaft. Surprisingly, Jag gives you lots of uh, USB and 12 volt and then a heated seat and then there's vents. There's dual mat pockets over here and then you have a really nice view uh, from this panoramic sunroof. Now the materials back here, um, there's the same soft touch plastic, although it feels a little bit on the cheap side. Um, this plastic here can feel a little bit cheaper and then there's some stitch right there where your elbows are gonna rest there's some some small storage here and then the rear seat passengers have a little cubby here where you can put your phone which is definitely nice when you fold down this armrest here it has a little cup holder and then the seats they fold down a 60 40. Now the Prestige trims it up will give you this power tailgate with the gesture controls, um, which means it's hands-free. And you can see here, my tester has an optional full-size spare tire that's literally raising up the floor another like four inches or whatnot. So it's eating into the cargo bay. And the F-Pace's cargo is on the smaller side. You're looking at around 33 and a half cubic feet of space. This probably is less than 30 because of that, that full-size spare. So keep that in mind if you guys want that option, it's gonna eat up space. Fold down those seats, you roughly double the size of that. It's a little bit smaller than its competitors, but overall, um, it is still a very practical car. This particular F-Pace, you have the company's two-liter Ingenium turbo diesel four-cylinder engine. Now, this is again a one engine above the base model, which is a two and a, oh, which is a two-liter turbo four-cylinder gas engine. And now, in this car, it makes 180 horsepower and uh, a stump pulling 318 pound-feet of torque. Now, that torque number basically matches that of the supercharged V6 that I tested last year, even though the horsepower is pretty pretty low, uh, which doesn't make this the quickest SUV if you're going to look at zero to 60 numbers. Now, uh, you buy the diesel because of the fuel economy. It is rated at 26 in the city, 33 on the highway, of course, on diesel fuel. It comes standard with all-wheel drive, which has a rear bias distribution, so this car feels mostly rear-wheel drive uh, when you guys have it in its dynamic setting in, like, dry conditions. Now, the F-Pace is uh, relatively heavy. It weighs around 3,900 pounds, um, so that doesn't make it the lightest in the segment, but uh, with that ZF 8-speed automatic, let's get out on the road and see how this performs.
So when I drove the F-Pace S last year, I was super, super giggly about that car. It was a 380 horsepower SUV that had rear drive characteristics and it felt like I was honestly just driving a taller, you know, sports sedan. And honestly, I've always been impressed with the um, Land Rover and Jag SUVs. Even though this vehicle doesn't share a platform with a Land Rover, it's actually based on the XE XF platform. It's a Jag platform. It does share some of the technology um, such as the, you know, the all surface information the drivetrain um, componentry, it's the engine from a Land Rover Jaguar. I mean, and with the diesel, I have to say, my expectations were high for this. Um, the diesel definitely has the, the effortless torque that I was looking for. However, what it really doesn't have is the premium sound that Jags are known for. That supercharged V6 just had that, that the burbling from the exhaust, it had a really nice whine from the supercharger, and this, It just kind of sounds like a tractor at times. There are times where it's very, very smooth, and then there are times where I'm like pushing the engine, and I'm like, oh God, it sounds terrible. But what you do feel is lots of power, even though the zero to 60 time for this car is only like 8.2 seconds, which is slow, um, comparable to what you expect for a diesel. Because it has so much torque, you don't even have to rev the engine that hard. It just puts your foot down and just go, pushes you back in the seat, and it feels very strong. So again, numbers aren't everything with diesels. It's all about the feel. Now, thankfully, um, because of that four-cylinder up front, it's lightened up the front end a little bit, and the Jaguar F-Pace is still one really fun to drive SUV. I mean, look at the steering. It's so quick, so precise. The body has the typical SUV roll, but it just feels so balanced. Um, you can really feel this car's you know near-perfect weight distribution. It has a more rear drive, rear drive biased all-wheel drive system. The transmission this car is the ZF8 speed automatic. It's a good transmission. It's a good partner for this um, diesel engine. It just doesn't have the noise and the sound. And I really, I need to drive the four-cylinder uh, turbo uh, gas engine in this car. I haven't had a chance to drive it yet. It is new this year. Um, but I imagine the diesel is probably going to turn off a lot of traditional Jag buyers who want the traditional sound, although the fuel economy benefit is going to be something that you're going to be looking at. <laughs> you can really feel there, when I put my foot down into a corner, this car wants to rotate. It wants to kind of drift a little bit. It's, it's funny because it's got so much torque and, and you, I actually was able to get the rear tires to kind of spin a little bit until it, it waits to finally send the power to the front. But again, dynamically, this is still one of the best handling SUVs in the segment. Now, in terms of comfort, I'm gonna put the drive mode selector into its normal setting. Um, now the suspension isn't really, it's not air suspension, it's its so, slightly adaptive. Um, and I do notice the ride in this car is a lot firmer than I was expecting. I mean, on smooth pavement now it's fine, but when I took this car you know, onto some really crappy pavement, it just kind of shook the cabin and had you know very pronounced amounts of just impact harshness. And that really is not what I associate with a luxury SUV. Again, the, the F-Pace is supposed to be the sportier segment, but if you're looking for a softer ride, um, the SQ5 or the Q5 is better, the Mercedes is a little bit softer. The Lexus is super soft. So again, if you guys want the softest ride, the Jag may not be the one for you. Now, visibility in here is also pretty good. Uh, there are some large pillars here that does take that do cut into your view, but the side mirrors are big. Uh, there's a decent view out of the back, although the window is a little bit on the small side from the styling. And then in terms of driver assistance, my car, my tester is missing the driver assistance package, but it does have active lane keep assist. It's got blind spot monitoring with a cross traffic alert. That is included in the um, R Sport trim level. Uh, but again, if you guys want the full driver Versus and stuff, you have to spend another 3200 uh, to get Jaguar's adaptive cruise with Q Assist, although this does have forward collision uh, alert. Now this car does have start stop, um, and it's basically active all the time unless you turn it off from this button. And it's definitely on, on the slower end in terms of some of the other systems I've, te I've tested. When I lift my foot off the brake, there's like a slight delay. So I did find that if I was in a hurry, I would turn the system off so it wouldn't slow me down. Now, when you're trying to get up to highway speeds, this is where you notice the diesel's lack of horsepower. I mean, it's got great initial grunt off the line, which is what you know with a diesel, but if you're trying to pass somebody at higher speeds, you're gonna have to wait a second. Uh, I much prefer the supercharged V6 uh, in that regard. But um, let's talk a little about the fuel economy because this is a diesel SUV, so you had, to, you had to get something in return, right? And in my weeks worth of testing, I've been averaging around 23 miles per gallon in mostly city driving. Now, that is three miles per gallon less than the EPA estimates, which is 26. Now, on the highway, I did get it up to about 35. 
So again, this is excellent fuel economy. Uh, on the highway, that's where diesels shine. In the city, a hybrid tends to get slightly better gas mileage, although I do prefer the delicious low-end torque this diesel, this diesel gives you. I just don't like the sound. Uh, I kind of wish Jag would consider putting the three liter of uh, turbo diesel V6 from the Range Rover Sport into this thing. That would be fantastic, although the fuel economy would take a hit. Now let's talk a little about the price of the F-Pace because um, this is a little bit more expensive than some competitors. It's a Jag SUV, I'm not really surprised. Uh, a base 25T F-Pace base model starts at just over $42,000. That that roughly makes it about $500, $1,000 more expensive than some of the European competitors, a couple grand more expensive than the Japanese competitors. Again, doesn't really shock me. It's it's a fair starting price for a car that's much more interesting than you know the, all the X3s that you see uh, on the road all, all, or all the Q5s. Now, my tester being the diesel starts at around $4,000 higher for the base premium. This car starts at around forty six two, um, And then from there on, you know, there's like another five if you guys want the prestige the, the prestige trim that gives you you know the xenon headlights the keyless access the upgraded head unit stuff like that my tester being the r sport starts about nine grand higher than the base uh, diesel this one starts at 55 grand and then of course being a jag mine has about twelve thousand uh, dollars worth of options on it and it's still missing about five grand worth of, worth of options on it so all in my tester is around 65 grand uh, i would probably add the driver assistance and that luxury package to push it around 70 grand which is an eye-opening amount of money um, for especially for a car that has not the best ride quality and the interior quality also is not at the top of its class although you do get one of the best looking suvs one of the most unique one of the best handling suvs dynamically and it's the only diesel luxury player in town so if that is what you're looking for something that just kind of fights the norm the f-pace certainly deserves to be at the top of your list anyways if you i hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2018 jaguar f-pace diesel if you're also looking to see the latest cars i'm testing make sure you follow me on instagram at redline underscore reviews like us on facebook and if you haven't done so, please subscribe to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you all in the next video.